Hey there. Today I'm going to talk about selecting things inside of Blender. Now I'm going to start with talking about how do you enter the edit mode, and then I'm going to move on to talking about the different uh, selection modes that are available to you. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to move on and talk about the different tools uh, that you can use to select the objects or elements uh, within Blender, and then uh, you know eventually you're going to want to do something to those selections. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about the nuances of the vertex mode because it is very different from what's found in other applications. It's not just a vertex mode, it actually is a hybrid mode that includes selecting um, vertices, edges, and polygons all in one. It is a very much a legacy thing before uh, edges and polygons were added into it, but it's pretty cool and I hope it, uh, it stays that way. Anyways, we're going to explore that at the end of the video. So let's get to it. So in order for us to go into an edit mode where we can start selecting elements and then manipulating them, what we first have to do is we have to hover over the piece of geometry that you're interested in, right click to select it to tell the computer that you are in fact uh, selecting this, this object or you're interested in this ob object, and then you're going to want to press tab. Once you press tab you'll notice that there's a wireframe and this tells you that you are in fact now ready to start manipulating this piece of geometry. Now, in order for you to get into uh, the different modes, what you want to do is you want to con press Control tab and this will pop up a window with three options, vertices, edges, and faces. So by going into vertex mode, you can select the individual points. By going into edge mode, you will be able to select edges. And by going into face, you'll be able to select the faces or polygons. Now, there's another method to do all this, and that is by following my cursor and by going down to vertex, edge, or face, and as you can see I'm now selecting faces, if I select this edge, I'm selecting this edge, and if I go back to here, select vertex, I am now selecting the vertex. Now here's the thing, if I press uh, tab again to exit the uh, edit mode, and now I press control tab, what you'll notice is that your model turns blue. Um, remember that you can only change modes, uh, selection modes, once you are in edit mode. If you don't, then if you press control tab what actually happens is you are now changing uh, the object mode uh, instead of edit, mo uh, edit mode and then automatically going into the different modes of selections what you're actually doing is by default you're going to weight paint mode so just know and remember that you have to first select the piece of geometry that you're interested in press tab and then y y this control tab menu will be open to you otherwise what's going to happen is when you press control tab you're just going to be basically going between the object mode and weight paint mode. So let us talk about the selections. So unlike the Maya or Max or any of the other apps where you use left click and here you use right click to select, right? And if I press and hold shift, I can add to that selection. Pressing control or anything like that doesn't really do or make a difference because what happens is while you're holding shift, you just basically go over the same selection and it'll deselect. So it's kind of like a toggle selection. So the edge loop tool is, uh, there's a few different things about it. So here's the thing. If I go and press control tab to enter the edge tool, uh, or edge mode rather, and I press and hold alt and then right click on any edge, you'll notice that I automatically select the edge loop. If I press and hold Alt Shift, I can toggle to add edges or edge loops rather. And just remember that it is this mode is based on me selecting the an edge to tell it which direction I want to select in. Now the vertex mode works exactly the same, so I can select uh, I can press and hold Alt, and then I can basically just click on an edge. If I press and hold Shift, I can add or subtract the edge loops. Now here's the thing, the face mode actually is a little bit nuanced because it's not based on the edge to orient or tell it to in which direction uh, to select in. Um, what you actually have to do is, depending on which edge you're closest to, it'll select that row. So if I press and hold Alt and I select closest uh, in, like in this direction rather, right away from the point or, or center point of the polygon, then it'll automatically select in that direction. If I now press and hold shift, 
to add to this selection, if I go in this direction, right, so from this point in this direction, or closest to this edge here, I am now moving in this direction. And then again, if I want to select this row, I, I can select any one of these. I can basically hover over any one of these polygons, right? And I just have to be closest to an edge. And then I basically tell it I want to move in this direction. Uh, I can select maybe this polygon here, or I can tell it to now go in this orientation, right? So I'm going to be closest to this poly or this edge. And I'm going to press and hold Alt, Shift, and right click. And you'll notice that I have now gone and selected in that direction. So that's basically the one uh, nuance as far as uh, this selection method goes. Okay, awesome. Now next up is uh, the edge ring tool. So edge ring tool works in a way that you press Alt Control and then you select the edge in which you want to select the parallel uh, edges. And again, if you press Alt Control Shift, you can add or subtract edge rings. Now the lasso tool. So if I press and hold control, I can add using the lasso tool. If I press and hold shift and left click, I subtract. So actually this is one of those inconsistent tools because what happens is in this one, you control and left click, not right click. Okay, right click actually doesn't do anything. So it's a little bit inconsistent because you're always using right click to select things, but with the lasso tool, you're using control left click, you know, instead of right click. So not one of those things I like personally, but you can always switch it up easy. If you just go into the uh, shortcuts menu and, or yeah, if you just go into the input uh, field inside of uh, file, user preferences and under input, you can always change it here. And I'm going to go into that uh, at a later time. So anyways, uh, yeah, like I said, control left click will do that. Now, if you press and hold Control Shift, you subtract. Okay, so Control Shift left click. Now, to now, if you want a rectangular or a circular kind of um, shape to, for selections, then what you have to do is you have to click B, right? For rectangular, you could think of it as a box, I guess, right? Now, if you want to, um, if it's basically so B left click will select and B middle click will deselect. So click B and it'll take you into the mode. Left click will select, right? And as soon as you let go, it lets go of that tool. And if you go B middle click, it'll deselect. And as soon as again, as soon as you press that middle click, it'll commit that tool and you're out. Okay. Now the reason why I mentioned that is because circle is a little different, right? So if, you, if I click circle, so C key, it automatically enters you into the circle select mode. And then here you see a little uh, circle around my cursor. If I use the uh, scroller, I can size it up or down. So I'm using the scroller on my mouse. If I left click, I add. If I middle click, I subtract. So I'm not holding anything right now, except my middle mouse button. Right, so this this kind of can be thought of as a, a ray cast select in a way. But notice this, because I'm using my middle click to subtract, I can't navigate. Right? Even if I press Alt and middle click, I cannot actually navigate. So this is locked until I finish my selection, which is by right clicking. So circle select, you have to right click to get out of it, and the circle disappears, and now you can use middle click to actually navigate around your model. In order for us to select uh, shared elements, or rather connected elements, uh, instead of a, an edit mode, what we're going to have to have to do is hover over the model, press tab to enter the edit mode, and now once you are in here, select any anything really that you're interested in. So for example, one thing you might notice is that there's cables here, there's this little arm, right? There's uh, this part of this camera or sensor. And not all of these pieces are necessarily connected together. So if I click on any one element and then I press L, you'll notice that I automatically select all the elements that are connected uh, together. Once again, L, 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 L. 
Now this works for any one of the modes, so if I do uh, edge, and then I press L, this works just as well. Now, uh, this is actually very useful when you're trying to um, extract parts out of a model. Uh, that's what I usually use it for. So I'll select a single polygon, press L, and then I will press P, uh, and then go by selection, and then this will extract that part of the model uh, out so I can actually work on that individual piece. And then usually after that, I'll join things back up because I don't personally like to have too many uh, pieces uh, within the scene. If I can kind of collapse it down to a more manageable model with fewer pieces, uh, especially if it's hard surface, then all the better. This video has been about uh, the tools that I use most often. Now, there is a little bit more to selections. And if I hover over to this part of the window uh, and press the select, uh, button here. You'll notice that a pop-up menu shows up and it shows you all the different tools that are available to you uh, for selecting things. Now again I didn't cover everything just only the things that I use most often but just know that there are more tools and sometimes it gives you the hotkeys so length for example control L or if you want to select more or less you can press the control number pad uh, plus or minus. Um, so for example if I press if I select uh, any kind of uh, polygon and then I press control plus and I keep pressing plus while holding control, you'll notice that I am in fact growing or shrinking uh, the selection. So just know that there are more tools and I definitely encourage for you guys to go ahead and explore. But again, this video is only about the tools uh, that I use most often. Before I finish this video, uh, what I wanted to talk about is the vertex hybrid mode that is, exists within uh, Blender. Now here's the thing, so if I hover over this piece of geometry and, and then I press tab and then pr uh, control tab to enter the vertex mode, um, what I meant about the uh, vertex mode being a hybrid mode is something like this. If I select a single vertex and then I press E, you'll notice that right away that I am extruding or extracting that vertex and automatically if I left click after I press E, you'll notice that there's a connected edge. Now, at the same time, if I select this, these two vertices, it'll automatically treat it as if it's an edge, right? So now if I extrude, you'll notice that now there's a polygon uh, that's been extruded out. Now if I do uh, something like this, where I select these four vertices, it automatically fills in the face for me to tell me that the polygon selection is complete, right? Otherwise, um, I could have selected, for example, these four points, and if these four points didn't make up the entire polygon, because what if there was another point here, right, and then another point here, um, then this would not be uh, filled. Now, of course, because it is, uh, in fact, complete and I have selected this polygon, now I can extrude and treat it as if it was a polygon when I uh, extrude that selection. Now, here's the thing. The reason why, uh, when you select a vertex, you see these uh, fall-off edges is to really show you what is connected to that vertex, right? So, for example, uh, the, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this one over here is connected to that uh, vertex. Now this is actually very important because what if you have two vertices that are sitting right on top of one another, right? Um, this would be a very quick way for you to diagnose whether there's a problem with the mesh or not. So if I uh, you know, do something like this and then I extrude and press left click, right? I have points basically sitting on one uh, in one spot and maybe the mesh is very dense and you don't know, or, or rather you don't see that there are, in fact, uh, problem geo. What if only one vertex is not connected? You might see a slight artifact, but what if it's um, at a hard angle or something else is going on in the geometry and you, even though there might be a slight shading artifact, like this shape over here, um, it might be something that you're actually expecting, right? So you might not see that there is, in fact, a problem, which is that there are, in fact, uh, multiple vertices sitting on one uh, in one spot. But after I've selected this one polygon, you'll notice that the fall off is over here and here. But these two edges are, in fact, not selected. And the reason why is because if I move this over, you'll notice that those two edges were never connected to this one uh, point. So this should be, um, you know, noted that this can actually be used as a way to uh, fix things. Um, 
or at least rather to diagnose things around uh, you know your geometry. Now, if you want to fix overlapping uh, points and edges, then what you could do is you could just basically go over here and just go to remove doubles, right? So what I would generally do is I would make a selection, then press Control plus a bunch of times, and then remove doubles, and now your mesh is fixed. And as you can see, if I right-click and move around here and select that all the edges are in fact um, connected. Now here's the thing, that uh, remove doubles is inside the, if I go over way back up to here, it's inside the tools section, right? Once you're in uh, edit mode and you'll have a bunch of tools here and then under the remove, remove doubles, um, that's where that's at. Now the reason why uh, this hybrid selection mode is still active within a blender it's mostly really because of speed now the reason why I mean that is that I don't need to enter uh, you know my other modes in order for me to do something like uh, select edge loops or edge rings and things like that I can pretty much do it all from here right I can select individual uh, points individual edges or polygons right I can use the lasso tool uh, and you know and do things like that so it is a fast way to work because you never have to worry about actually switching modes where the other modes actually come in handy however is when you want to do alternate selections so for example right now if I select this point and then this one you automatically select an edge right but what if I wanted to select this edge and then this edge over here while skipping this one well if I select this point now and this point now you automatically get this edge selected as well because it is being connected by this point and this point. So it automatically selects the geometry in between in case, in this case being the, you know those edges. Now if I were to go into edge edit mode you'll notice that if I just select this edge and this edge I can do an extrusion and I'll select uh, I mean and those two edges have been extruded right but again if I go into vertex mode if I select these two edges and then these two, uh, I mean, these two vertices, and then these two vertices, and then they do an extrude, you'll notice that the result is very different. Uh, at the same time, if I go to face, if I select this uh, face, this one, this one, and then I do an extrude, you'll notice that automatically I can do an alternate selection, right? And if I try to do the same thing with uh, vertices, you'll notice that this automatically has been filled, and so has this one. So now when I extrude, the result is wildly different. So just know that the, do, the separation of the polygons and edges were added to make these selections more flexible and lock you in a certain mode that you might want to keep in order to keep your selections uh, more predictable, right? Because again, when you're in vertex or in yeah in vertex uh, selection mode, I can select something like this, and now I have you know individual vertices that are floating and polygons. And now if I press uh, uh, extrude, you'll notice that the selection that I've extruded, the result is kind of uh, ugly versus in the other modes that would never be the case. You'd always get just polygons or just edges and the result that you'd get are, is a little bit more methodical. But if you know what you're doing, the vertex selection can prove to be very powerful and very fast. So that's basically what I meant by hybrid. And again, it is an important piece of the puzzle, but it comes with a few caveats. And I just thought I'd, uh, I'd mention them.